Good morning and welcome to another session of Daily Jesus. Today we're going to read from Genesis 41 to 45. Pharaoh, the leader of Egypt, has a bizarre dream. He looked throughout all of Egypt to find someone that is able to interpret this dream for him, but he wasn't able to find anyone. At that time, the butler who had been just released from prison remembered that Joseph um, uh, that had interpreted his own dream and introduces him to Pharaoh. Joseph interprets Pharaoh's dream and it tells uh, that there will be some seven years of bountiful harvest followed by seven years of drought and famine. Through this, Joseph becomes the prime minister of Egypt. Pharaoh appoints him there and Pharaoh's dream becomes a reality and the famine comes to the land of Egypt. Through, through this, Joseph is reunited with his brothers and through this meeting of the brothers, Joseph is able to meet his father, Jacob, once again. And in this way, Joseph was able to use, be used by God to save many lives. So keeping this in mind, uh, let's all open our Bibles to read the passage today. Genesis chapter 41. Joseph interprets Pharaoh's dreams. After two whole years, Pharaoh dreamed that he was standing by the Nile, and behold, they, there came up out of the Nile seven cows, attractive and plump, and they fed in the reed grass. And behold, seven other cows, ugly and thin, came out of the Nile after them, and stood by the other cows on the bank of the Nile. And the ugly thin cows ate up the seven attractive plump cows. Then Pharaoh awoke, and he fell asleep and dreamed a second time. And behold, seven years of grain and plump and good were growing on one stalk. And behold, after them sprouted seven years, thin and blighted by the east wind. And the thin ears swallowed up the seven plump full ears. And Pharaoh awoke, and behold, it was a dream. So in the morning his, his spirit was troubled, and he sent and called for all the magicians of Egypt and all its wise men. Pharaoh told them his dreams, but there was none who could interpret them to Pharaoh. Then the chief cupbearer said to Pharaoh, I remember my offenses today. When Pharaoh was angry with his servants and put me and the chief baker into custody in the house of the captain of the guard, we dreamed on the same night, and he and I, each having a dream with his own interpretation. A young Hebrew was there with us, a servant of the captain of the guard. When we told him, he interpreted our dreams to us, giving an interpretation to each man according to his dream. And as he interpreted to us, so it came about. I was stored to my office, and the baker was hanged. Then the pharaoh sent and called Joseph, and they quickly brought him out of the pit. And when he had shaved himself and changed his clothes, he came in before Pharaoh. And Pharaoh said to Joseph, I have had a dream, and there is no one who can interpret it. I have heard it said of you that when you hear a dream, you can interpret it. Joseph answered Pharaoh, It is not in me. God will give Pharaoh a favorable answer. Then Pharaoh said to Joseph, Behold, in my dream I was standing on the banks of the Nile. Seven cows, plump and attractive, came up out of the Nile and fed in the reed grass. Seven other cows came up after them, poor and very ugly and thin, such as I had never seen in all the land of Egypt. And the thin, ugly cows ate up the first seven plump cows, but when they had eaten them, no one would have known that they had eaten them for they were still as ugly as at the beginning. Then I awoke. I also saw in my dream seven years uh, growing on one stalk, full and good. Seven years withered and thin and blighted by the east wind sprouted after them. And the thin ears swallowed up the seven good ears. And I told it to the magicians, but there was no one who could explain it to me. Then Pharaoh said to, uh, Joseph said to Pharaoh, The dreams of the Pharaoh are one. God has revealed to Pharaoh what he is about to do. The seven good cows are seven years, and the seven good ears are se seven years. The dreams are one. The seven lean and ugly cows that came up after them are seven years, and the seven empty ears blighted by the east wind are also seven years of famine. 
It is as I told Pharaoh, God has shown to Pharaoh what he is about to do. There will come seven years of great plenty uh, throughout all the land of Egypt. But after them, there will arise seven years of famine, and all the plenty will be forgotten in the land of Egypt. The famine will consume the land, and the plenty will be unknown in the land by reason of the famine that will follow, for it will be very severe. And the doubling of the Pharaoh's dream means that the thing is fixed by God, and God will shortly bring it about. Now, therefore, let Pharaoh select a discerning and wise man, and set him over the land of Egypt. Let Pharaoh proceed to appoint overseers over the land and take one fifth of the produce of the land of Egypt during the seven plentiful years, and let them gather all the food of these good years that are coming and store up grain under the authority of Pharaoh for food in the cities, and let them keep it. That food shall be reserved for the land against the seven years of famine that are to occur in the land of Egypt, so that the land may not perish through the famine. This proposal pleased Pharaoh and all his servants. And the Pharaoh said to his servants, "Can we find a man like this in whom he is the spirit of God?" Then Pharaoh said to Joseph, "Since God has shown you all this, there is none so discerning and wise as you are. You shall be over my house, and all my people shall order themselves as you command. Only as regards regards the throne will I be greater than you." And Pharaoh said to Joseph, "See, I have set you over all the land of Egypt." Then Pharaoh took his signet ring from his hand and put it on Joseph's hands, and clothed him in garments of fine linen, and put a gold chain about his neck, and he made him ride in his second chariot. And they called out before him, "Bow the knee!" Thus he set him over all the land of Egypt. Moreover. Pharaoh said to Joseph, "I am Pharaoh, and without your consent, no no one shall lift up hands or foot in all the lands of Egypt." And Pharaoh calls Joseph's name Jephunneh Paneah, and he gave him in marriage Asenath, the daughter of Pontifera, priest of On. So Joseph went out over the land of Egypt. Joseph was thirty years old, and he entered the service of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. And Joseph went out from the presence of Pharaoh and went through all the land of Egypt. During the seven plentiful years that the earth produced abundantly, and he gathered up all the food of these seven years, which occurred in the land of Egypt, put the food in the cities. He put in every city the food from the fields around it. And Joseph stored up grain in great abundance, like the sand of the sea, until he ceased to measure it, for it could not be measured. Before the years of famine came, two sons were born to Joseph, and Asenath, the daughter of Pontifera, priest of On, bore them to him. Joseph called the name of the firstborn Manasseh, for he said, "God has made me forget all my hardship and all my father's house." The name of the second he called Ephraim. For God has made me fruitful in the land of my affliction. The seven years of plenty that occurred in the land of Egypt came to an end, and the seven years of famine began to come, as Joseph had said. There was famine in all lands, but in all the lands of Egypt there was bread. When the old land of Egypt was famished, the people cried to Pharaoh for bread. Pharaoh said to all the Egyptians, "Go to Joseph. What he says to you, do." So when the famine had spread over all the land, Joseph opened opened all the storehouses and sold to Egyptians, for the famine was severe in the land of Egypt. Moreover, all the earth came to Egypt to Joseph to buy the grain, because the famine was severe all over the earth. Chapter forty-two. When Jacob learned that there was grain for sale in Egypt, he said to his sons, "Why do you look at one another?" And he said, "Behold, I have heard that there is grain for sale in Egypt. Go down and buy grain for us there, that we may live and not die." So ten of Joseph's brothers went down to buy grain in Egypt, but Joseph did not send Benjamin, Joseph's brother, with his brothers, for he feared that harm might happen to him. Thus the sons of Israel came to buy among the others who came, for the famine was in the land of Canaan. 
Now Joseph was governor over the land. He was the one who sold to all the people of the land. And Joseph's brothers came and bowed themselves before him with their faces to the ground. Joseph saw his brothers and recognized them, but he treated them like strangers and spoke roughly to them. Where do you come from? He said, they said. From the land of Canaan to buy food. And Joseph recognized his brothers, but they, they did not recognize him. And Joseph remembered the dreams that he had dreamed of them. And he said to them, You are spies. You have come to see the nakedness of the land. They said to him, No, my lord, your servants have come to buy food. We are all sons of one man. We are honest men. Your servants have never been spies. He said to them, No, it is the nakedness of the land that you have come to see. And they said, we, your servants, are twelve brothers, the sons of one man, in the land of Canaan. And behold, the youngest is this day with our father, and one is no more. But Joseph said to them, It is as I said to you, you are spies. By this you shall be tested. By the life of Pharaoh you shall not go from his, this place unless your youngest brother comes here. Send one of you, and let him bring your brother while you remain confined, that your words may be tested, whether there is truth in you, or else, by the life of, of Pharaoh, surely you are spies. And he put them all together in the custody for three days. On the third day, Joseph said to them, Do this, you will leave, for I fear God. If you are honest men, let one of your brothers remain confined, where you are in custody, and let the rest go carry grain for the famine of your households, and bring your youngest brother to me, so your words will be verified, and you shall not die. And they did so. Then they said to one another, In truth we are guilty concerning our brother, in that we saw the distress of his soul when he begged us, and we did not listen. That is why this distress has come upon us. And Reuben answered them, Did I not tell you not to sin against the boy? But you did not listen. So there comes a reckoning for his blood. They did not know that Joseph understood them, for there was an interpreter between them. Then he turned away from, man, from them and wept. And he returned to them and spoke to them. And he took uh, Simeon from them and bound him before their eyes. And Joseph gave orders to fill their bags with grain and to replace every man's money in his sack and to give them provisions for the journey. This was done for them. Then they loaded their donkeys with their grain and departed. And as one of them opened his sack to give his donkey a fodder at the lodging place, he saw his money in the, months, in the mouth of his sack. He said to his brothers, My money has been put back. Here it is the mouth of my sack. At this, their hearts failed them, and they turned trembling to one another, saying, What is this that God has done to us? When they came to Jacob, their father in the land of Canaan, they told him all that had happened to them, saying, The man, the lord of the land, spoke roughly to us, took us to be spies of the land. But we said to him, We are honest men. We, are, we have never been spies. We are twelve brothers, sons of our father. One is no more, and the youngest is this day with our father in the land of Canaan. Then the man, the lord of the land, said to us, By this I shall know that you are honest men. Leave one of your brothers with me, and take grain for the famine of your households, and go your way. Bring your youngest brother to me, then I shall know that you are not spies but honest men, and I will deliver your brother to you, and you shall trade in the land. As they emptied their sacks, behold, every man's a bundle of money was in his sack, and when they, they and their father saw their bundles of money, they were afraid. And Jacob their father said to them, You have um, uh, bereaved me of my children. Joseph is no more, and Simeon is, is no more. And now you would take Benjamin. All this has come against me. Then Reuben said to his father, Kill my two sons, if I do not bring him back to you. Put him in my hands, and I will bring him back to you. 
But he said, My son shall not go down with you, for his, for his brother is dead, and he is the only one left. If, if harm should happen to him on the journey that you are to make, you may bring down my gray hairs with sorrow to sell. Chapter 43 Now the famine was severe in the land, and when they had eaten the grain that they had brought from Egypt, their father said to them, Go again, buy us a little food. But Judah said to him, The man solemnly warned us, saying, You shall not see my face unless your brother is with you. If you will send our brother with us, we will go down and buy you food. But if you will not send him, we will not go down. For the man said to us, You shall not see my face unless your brother is with you. Israel said, Why did you treat me so badly as to tell the man that you had another brother? They replied, The man questioned us carefully about ourselves and our kindred, saying, Is your father still alive? Do you have another brother? What we told him was in answer to these questions. Could we in any way know that he would say, Bring your brother down? And Judah said to Israel, his father, Send the boy with me, and we will arise and go, that we may live and not die, both we and you, and also our little ones. O oh, be a, a pledge of his safety. From my hand you shall require him. If I do not bring him back to you, set him before you, and let me bear the blame forever. If we had not delayed, we would now have returned twice. Then their father Israel said to them, If it must be so, then do this. Take some of the choice of fruits from of the land in your bags, and carry a present down to the man, a little balm, and a little honey, a gum, a myrrh, pistachio nuts, and almonds. Take double the money with you, carry back with you the money that was returned in the mouth of your sacks. Perhaps it was an oversight. Take also your brother and arise, go again to the man. May God Almighty grant you mercy before the man, and may be sent back your other brother and Benjamin. And as for me, if I am bereaved of my children, I am bereaved. So the man took this present, and they took double the money with them and Benjamin. They arose and went down to Egypt and stood before Joseph. When Joseph saw Benjamin with them, he said to the steward of his house, Bring the men into the house, and slaughter an animal and make ready, for the men are to dine with me at noon. The men did as Joseph told him and brought the men to Joseph's house. And the men were afraid because they were brought to Joseph's house, and they said, It is because of the money which was replaced in our sacks the first time, and we are brought in, so that he may assault us and fall upon us to make our servants and seize our donkeys. So they went up to the steward of Joseph's house and spoke with him at the door of the house, and said, O oh my lord, we came down the first time to buy food, and when we came to the lodging place, we opened our sacks, and there was each man's money in the mouth of his sack, our money in full weight. So we have brought it again with us, and we have brought other money down with us to buy food. We do not know who put our money in our sacks, he replied. Peace to you. Do not be afraid. Your God and the God of your father has put treasure in your sacks for you. I receive your money. Then he brought Simeon out to them, and when the man had brought the men into Joseph's house and given them water, they had washed their feet, and when he had given their donkeys fodder, they prepared the present for Joseph's coming at noon, for they heard that they should eat bread there. When Joseph came home, they brought into the house to him the present that they had with them and bowed down to him to the ground. And he inquired about their welfare and said, Is your father well, the old man of whom you spoke? Is he still alive? They said, Your servant, our father is well, he is well, still alive. And they bowed their heads and prostrated themselves. And he lifted up his eyes and saw his brother Benjamin, his mother's son. 
and said, Is this your youngest brother of whom you spoke to me? God be gracious to you, my son. Then Joseph hurried out, for his compassion grew warm for his brother, and he sought a place to weep. And he entered his chamber and wept again. Then he washed his face and came out. And controlling himself, he said, Serve the food. They served him by himself, and then by themselves, and the Egyptians who ate with him by themselves, because the Egyptians could not eat with the Hebrews, for that is an abomination to the Egyptians. And they set before him the firstborn according to his um, birthright, and the youngest according to his youth. And the men looked at one another in amazement. Portions were take, taken to them from Joseph's table, but Benjamin's portion was five times as much as any of theirs. And they drank and were merry with him. Chapter 44 Then he commanded the steward of his house, fill the men's sacks with food as much as they can carry, and put each man's money in the mouth of his sack and put my cup, the silver cup, the mouth of the sack of the youngest, with his money for the grain. And he did as Joseph told him. As soon as the morning was light, the men were sent away with their donkeys. They had gone only a short distance from the city. Now Joseph said to his steward, Up, follow the men. And when you overtake them, say to them, Why have you repaid evil for good? Is it not from uh, this that Lord drinks, and by this that he, he practices uh, divination? You have done evil in doing this. When he overtook them, he spoke to them these words, and they say to him, Why does my Lord speak such words as these? Far be it uh, from your servants to do such a thing. Behold, the money that we found in the mouths of our sacks we brought back to you from the land of Canaan. How then could we steal silver or gold from your Lord's house? Whichever of your servant is found with it shall die, and we also will be my Lord's servants. He said, Let it be as you say. He who is found with it shall be my servant, and the rest of you shall be innocent. Then each man quickly lowered his sack to the ground, and each man opened his sack, and he searched, beginning with the eldest and ending with the youngest. And the cup was found in Benjamin's sack. Then they tore his, their clothes, and every man loaded his donkey, and they returned to the city. When Judah and his brothers came to Joseph's house, he was still there. They fell before him to the ground. Joseph said to them, What deed is this that you have done? Do you not know that a man like me can indeed practice divination? And Judah said, What shall we say to my Lord? What shall we speak? Or how can we clear ourselves? God has found out the guilt of your servants. Behold, we are my Lord's servant, both we and he also in whose, land, whose hand the cup has been found. But he said, Far be it from me that I should do so. Only the man in whose hand the cup was found shall be my servant. But as for you, go up in peace and to your father. Then Judah went up to him and said, Oh, my Lord, please let your servant speak a word in my Lord's ears. And let not your anger burn against your servant, for you are like Pharaoh himself. My Lord asked his servants, saying, Have you a father or a brother? And we said to my Lord, we have a father, an old man, and a young brother, the child of his old age. His brother is dead, and he alone is left of his mother's children, and his father loves him. Then you say to your servants, Bring him down to me, that I may set my eyes on him. We say to my Lord, The boy cannot leave his father, for if he should leave his father, his father would die. Then you say to your servants, Unless your youngest brother comes down with you, you shall not see my face again. When we went back to your servant, my father, we told him the words of my Lord. And when our father said, Go again, buy, buy us a little food, we said, We cannot go down. If our youngest brother goes with us, then we will go down. 
but we cannot see the man's face unless the young, our youngest brother is with us. Then your servant, my father, said to us, You know that my wife bore me two sons. One left me, and I said, Surely he has been torn to pieces, and I have never seen him since. If you take this one also from me, a harm happens to him. You, sh- you will bring down my gray hairs in evil to sell. Now therefore, as soon as I come to your servant, my father, and the boy is not with us then, and as his life is bound up in the boy's life, as soon as he sees that the boy is not with us, he will die, and your servants will bring down the gray hairs of your servant, our father, with sorrow to sell. For your servant became a pledge of safety for the boy to my father, saying, If I do not bring him back to you, then I shall bear the blame before my father all my life. Now therefore please let your servant remain instead of the boy as a servant to my lord, and let the boy go back with his brothers. For how can I go back to my father if the boy is not with me? I fear to see the evil that would find my father. Chapter 45 Then Joseph could not control himself before all those who stood by him. He cried, Make everyone go out from me. So no one strayed with him when Joseph made himself known to his brothers. And he wept aloud, so that the Egyptians heard it, and the household of Pharaoh heard it. And Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Is my father still alive? But his brothers could not answer him for they were dismayed at his presence. So Joseph said to his brothers, Come near to me, please. And they they came near, and he said, I am your brother Joseph, whom you sold into Egypt. And now do not be distressed or angry with yourselves because you sold me here, for God sent me before you to preserve life. For the famine has been in the land these two years, and there are yet five years in which there will be neither uh, plowing nor harvest. And God sent me before you to preserve for you a remnant on earth, and to keep alive for you many survivors. So it was not you who sent me here, but God. He has made me a father to Pharaoh, and lord of all his house, and ruler over all the land of Egypt. Hurry and go up to my father and say to him, Thus says your son Joseph, God has made me lord of all Egypt. Come down to me. Do not do not tarry. You shall dwell in the land of Goshen, and you shall be near me. You and your children, and your children's children, and your flocks, and your herds, and all that you have. There I will provide for you, for there are yet five years of famine to come, so that you and your household and all that you have do not come to poverty and now your eyes see and the eyes of my brother benjamin see that it is my mouth that speaks to you you must tell my father of all my honor in egypt and of all that you have seen hurry and bring my father down here then he fell upon his brother benjamin's neck and wept and benjamin wept upon his neck and he kissed all his brothers and wept upon them. After that, his brothers talked with him. When the report was heard in Pharaoh's house, Joseph, Joseph's brothers have come. It pleased the Pharaoh and his servants. And Pharaoh said to Joseph, Say to your brothers, do this, load your beasts and go back to the land of Canaan. And take your father and your households and come to me, and I will give you the best of the land of Egypt and you shall eat the fat of the land. And you, Joseph, are commanded to say, Do this, take the wagons from the land of Egypt for your little ones and for your wives, and bring your father and come. Have no concern for your goods, for the best of all the land of Egypt is yours. The sons of Israel did so, and Joseph gave them wagons, according to the command of Pharaoh, and gave them provisions for the journey. To each and all of them he gave a change of clothes, uh, but, but to Benjamin he gave the three hundred shekels of silver and five changes of clothes. To his father he sent as follows, ten donkeys loaded with the good things of Egypt, and ten female donkeys loaded with grain, bread, and provision for his father on the journey. Then he sent his brothers away, 
and as they departed, he said to them, Do not quarrel on the way. So they went up out of Egypt and came to the land of Canaan, to their father Jacob. And they told him, Joseph is still alive, and he is ruler over all the land of Egypt. And his heart became numb, for he did not believe them. But when they told him all the words of Joseph, which he had said to them, and when he saw the wagons that Joseph had sent to carry him, the spirit of their father Jacob revived. And Israel said, It is enough. Joseph, my son, is still alive. I will go and see him before I die. This is the word of God given to us today. Amen. Keeping what we've just read in mind, I'll invite you to some application questions that will help you meditate on what we've just read. Firstly, when interpreting the dream, Joseph confesses to the Pharaoh that I do not have that ability. God is the one who will give you the answer that will please you. Are you trusting and relying on God's power today? Where do I need to trust, um, where do I need to trust um, God's power in my life right now? Secondly, Joseph is sold to Egypt uh, due to the brothers' uh, jealousy. But even through this, God brings out good. Have you ever experienced God working to bring good about your life despite the mistakes? Let us take time to reflect back on our own lives. And finally, how is the passage today leading you to a moment of conviction and repentance? Keeping all this in mind, let us all come to a moment of prayer as we end. Heavenly Father, we thank you that uh, you've shown us through Joseph that you are such a faithful God and do, and do work miracles despite and through and using sufferings. Father, we confess that uh, we do not have any ability to come before you or to be reconciled with you, and yet you work faithfully in our lives to reconcile your, our, yourselves to us, and you empower us and you use our weaknesses to make us um, and use us for your kingdom. Father, we pray um, that you do use us today in our own daily ministries. And just as you use Joseph, the, uh, your humble servant, that uh, you use our own sufferings and weaknesses, that you may um, expand your kingdom through us and allow us to be obedient to your using. And I pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. I do hope and pray that you will say um, an obedient amen to the callings of your daily ministries today. Embrace Jesus embrace people.